This is the recently refreshed 2016 Toyota RAV4. Now the funny thing is, last year they sold over 300,000 of these. That's around 60 to 70% of the entire population. Now you might be wondering, what is this color? Is it purple? Is it black cherry? No, actually it's black currant metallic. Every single person that looks at it says, that's unique. You don't see a lot of this color out there, so that's nice. The second thing you notice is, this doesn't look like every mainstream watered down car. Yes, it does have that SUV, compact SUV look, but you don't look at it and think, wow, this is so boring, I'm gonna just, pass out looking at it and driving it every day. They have added some elements of just some sportiness from the LED headlamps to the bumper and front grille design to the overall lines. There's something interesting to look at here. The rear is just more of the same. The taillight design, these new taillights look really good back here and it almost feels like they're borrowing some things here from Lexus. This RAV4 has an electronic lift gate which you can operate via your remote control or this button here. Now, like most electronic lift gates, and I complain about this all the time, it just feels like it takes forever to open. I just wanna push it up myself. And then if you do that, it just stops dead in its tracks, of course. And then you have to, I don't know, kind of force it up the rest of the way. Once you get in the back of the RAV4 here, this is where all of this makes sense. And you realize where this totally destroys a hatchback or a compact SUV. There is a ton of space back here. When you put these back seats down, you could literally fit a whole bunch of farm animals. You could probably fit a hog in here, uh, some type of geriatric baboon, and have plenty of space to spare. It's one of its best features if you're looking for a SUV. So what do we got, Scott? It looks like a Lexus NX to me. Yeah, it's because it's the same chassis. Uh, although I'm, I know the owners will argue that this is nothing like the NX well, 200T. They spray painted the struts blue on this one. That one had black ones. Oh yeah, so what's the blue give you? Tokikos. Uh, they look sporty. Uh, that could account for its quite firm ride as well. Probably. But. We did a, a, just a quick review of our underbody shots of the NX 200T and indeed almost all the suspension components are identical. So there may be some differences in terms of bushings and you know sound deadening, but for the most part, this RAV4 is you know a tried and true platform. It's been around for a long yeah, time. It looks like the old RAV4s too. Uh, you have strut-based front suspension, stamped steel, uh, cast steel parts. There's really no use of aluminum anywhere to be found, you know, aside from engine and transmission and the differential. But, uh, you know, this is a platform that's been around and it's you're, you really shouldn't have any issues with it. You haven't seen any issues with the RAV4s, have you? Except for the four-cylinder motors. Like, what's the problem? Oil with consumption. Or haven't they? Oh, there's no problem with those. And all of a sudden, a recall came out where they're re-ringing the motors. But that's, I don't know what year that goes up to, so. That's not the newer direction. No, that's the, back to ancient. like 08. Okay. So. As we move to the center of the car, we see there is a two-piece drive shaft. Nothing unusual here. Do you see any problems with the drive shafts or the all-wheel drive system on these? Not usually, but usually with a two-piece drive shaft, you end up, if a U-joint goes bad, you gotta throw it in the garbage and buy a new one. Okay. for a thousand dollars the back is a compact double wishbone suspension uh, they cram a lot of suspension into a small space and you can tell again by the trailing arms the actual the upper control arm how it's bent like a freaking something yeah <laughs> a I mean, boomerang yep. so it doesn't hit the car 
the sway bar length and overall how compact the sway bar and the end lengths are. And of course, the extreme angle that the dampers are on. You can tell they tried to fit as much in here as possible in the least amount of space. Yeah, it's almost amazing when it's on that big of an angle how it can even work. All right. We're under the hood. What do we have here? Some dual VVT-I. How many liters? Two five. It's not a bad motor. You don't. You haven't seen too many problems with the four cylinders, except those certain model years with the rings, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, any problems with the V6 Rav fours? Not yet. No problems with the all-wheel drive system. Not no. Okay. Uh, there's really nothing too exciting to talk about under here. Uh, it's a very empty. It's a chasm. It, I don't even know what. It, I can't believe it. There's so much room. There's not covers over everything, and I know. Yeah, and that actually makes it more enjoyable for to, you to work yeah, on. To, well, especially for viewing under the bonnet, man. It's like, wow, there's an air gap somewhere, and you can actually get behind the motor without having to deal with taking 20 pounds of plastic trim off. Mm -hmm. Let's get on the road with the Rav Four, shall we? Maybe we should put it in gear too. <laughs> These automatics, I don't know how to drive them. Let's talk about one of my favorite things about the RAV4, and that is steering feel and steering effort, more importantly. In slower speed transitions, there is really good weight to this wheel. Uh, most modern cars now have opted for electric power steering, and when you have electric power steering, it gives you this very synthetic, uh, just over-boosted feel. It's numb. I, in the RAV4, especially in slower speed uh, maneuvers, there's just a really good weight. You feel like you're connected to the wheels. You feel like you're driving a car and not a simulator. You can't take this wheel and spin it back and forth with a pinky. And uh, that's why it's one of my more favorite features of this car. Now, this automatic transmission has a couple different modes. You have normal, eco, and sport. When you put this car in sport, it just, like most cars, it downshifts. It keeps the RPMs up, so you're kind of in that sweet spot for torque. In eco mode, its primary objective is fuel economy, so the transmission's always upshifting to the highest gear possible at any given point. The throttle feels a little bit more dead when you push down the throttle, it's not as responsive. But in normal mode, it's kind of a good balance of both, and I find that the throttle response is really good on this car. The only negative part about it is the transmission behavior, it seems to gear hunt a lot. Specifically when you're starting from a standstill and you kind of get going and you're just really kind of lazy on the throttle, you're not heavy on the throttle, it seems to uh, get going and then gets confused and will downshift to a lower gear to kind of get it going. It just randomly does that and it's just one quirk about this car that I kind of haven't got used to. Most people will never notice that behavior though. All right, we're gonna go in manual mode. We're in sport. And let's take a look at some of the handling. The transmission uh, automatically downshifts for you even in manual mode, so it doesn't hold revs, so it kind of makes it pointless. But again, this is not the car that you're gonna be manually shifting in automatic. Everybody's gonna leave it in automatic mode, so that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna leave it in normal. We're gonna leave it in automatic and take it through some of the turns. Brakes are a little soft. Uh, I'll be straight about that. It, it, they're, you don't get immediate bite. They're more spongy feeling. Uh, so if you like a really hard, firm brake pedal that reacts instantaneously, that's not this car. There is understeer. This car favors understeer more than anything. Uh, and the big negative part about the overall drivability of this RAV4 is the tires. They're on these eco all season tires that have marginal grip on the dry and really poor grip in any type of wet conditions or slush. 
my my confidence with lateral grip on this car in any type of wet is really bad. The front end washes out. It understeers so bad. So if you're somebody that wants to drive this vehicle in a more sporty, fun, if you're an enthusiast, you'd have to swap out the tires. But I think, again, for most people, uh, these Eco tires are going to get you the fuel efficiency, uh, that level of refinement and you know quietness that you want. Now cruising along, the overall ride quality is good on good pavement. Uh, one of the RAV4's best suits is it gives you a sense of refinement, uh, road isolation. Now it's not luxury car, you know, it definitely is not, but it's not eco car either. They found a balance between, you know, comfort, ride quality, and quietness that most people getting in here are going to appreciate. Um, it's not until you get on choppy pavement that I have a big problem with it. The next test is just how does the suspension manage itself over broken choppy pavement. This is where I've started to bring more vehicles and full disclosure, most cars and trucks don't do well back here. It's really difficult to dampen these types of bumps. So in terms of the RAV4, I kind of expected that it would do better back here. I really did. I thought it would have a more controlled, more dampened ride. But I think what Toyota did here is they over dampened the, 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 the shocks here to give it that more firm, sporty feeling. And I had the same complaint about the NX200T. That felt really choppy to me for what it was. And big shock, it's on the same chassis. The first thing the owner said is, did you check the tire pressures? Because it shouldn't be like that. Well, I did on that car. And that's the first thing I checked here. And yes, the tires were overinflated by four PSI at 36 all around. So I dropped the, the pressures down to the recommended 32 and it did improve it a little bit. And then I dropped it down to 30 to see how much it would be even if it was any better. And it did improve the ride quality, but I still have this sense of chop and over dampening from the suspension setup. So really it's gonna be up to the owners of this car and the people test driving it's gonna figure out, is it offensive to them as well? Acceleration. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, it's a four cylinder. Will this ever be like the days of the RAV4s with the V6? No way. I mean, you could win some serious street races with that thing, not here. But the good thing is, is it's tuned, you know, it's tuned for how you would drive every day. The torque and the power come on really early. You get this surge, you get thrown back in your seat a little bit as you get going. And the actual throttle, tuning is pretty good especially in sport mode when you hit the throttle it just comes alive and i think most people are gonna have zero complaints about this now is it as refined as a v6 no it's not i mean especially on cold starts when it goes into that valve overlap mode to to heat up your emission system man is it sound it sounds bad but once you get going it's a pretty much quiet uh, non-offensive driving experience i was driving at night and I could not see in snow and a lot of sleep. And I think mostly because this car has LED headlights and brights. Now that's actually a good thing for most modern cars, but I find that the color temperature is way too high for headlights for me. They're probably around 6,500 K, which means they're blue. They look very blue. And specifically when you turn on the fog lights for this thing, you can tell the difference between a standard halogen bulb and an LED bulb is just a massive difference. Uh, and the negative part is in the snow specifically, everything looks washed out. You don't have clear vision on the outer edges of the road because everything's just whited out and blue looking. One of the best things about the interior of the RAV4 is how Toyota has been able to blend elements from their truck platforms, like the new Toyota Tacoma, which is a great truck interior. You have these more ruggedized feeling switches. Some of the placement of the switches and the vents and the plastics feels like it's lifted straight out of a truck. But they're not neglecting what car people like. The soft touch plastics, materials, the steering wheel, the turn signal and wiper stocks feel very car-like. The door handles, the switches. So they've blended both here and they're trying to appeal to both audiences, both car and truck people. 
Now, many people looking for a RAV4 are gonna be interested in the safety features because when you're getting in a class of vehicle, you want that stuff. And this doesn't disappoint. You have lane departure warning, lane departure assist, sway warning, which means if you start weaving around in your lane too much, the car recognizes that and tells you, hey, take a break. Uh, you have blind spot monitoring, radar cruise control, a 360 camera system, which uh, it works, but it's not the greatest. Uh, you have parking sensors, which I find very helpful. It tells you just how close you are to something in front of you or behind you when you're parking, which is almost a must have when you get into a bigger vehicle. Now, in terms of ergonomics, this is a pretty well-sorted interior. Like I said, it's kind of that combo between a truck and a car. So some of these switches and buttons don't really make a lot of sense in terms of their placement. Like your seat heaters, your sport mode and all that is kind of buried down here. You can't really see it line of sight. The second thing is this center stack area is pretty well laid out. It's all physical controls, no capacitive touch. It's really easy to find what you're looking for and press. Now, the only negative thing here is because this is on an angle, and they've chosen this glossy plastic over the top portion of this, it's really reflective. It gets a, and it's really difficult to see in direct sunlight. You can't see usually the right or left side of this little LCD screen. And it's a fingerprint micro scratch magnet, which is kind of annoying. But one thing that they did here with this head unit, the touch screen, is it's not capacitive touch. And it doesn't have this glossy finish that some of the other Toyota cars have. So it's a matte finish, so you don't get a lot of glare, and you can use this in the winter with gloves on. You don't have to you know, take your glove off or have special gloves to touch the screen. It's resistive, which is actually in a vehicle like this, preferable for me. In terms of interior space, this isn't gonna disappoint. There is a ton of front legroom and a ton of rear legroom. You're always gonna be comfortable. The only thing that I found annoying is that when you wanna fold down the rear seats, you actually have to move these seats pretty far forward uh, otherwise that headrest in the back gets caught on there. So that's one annoying part. But in terms of cargo capacity, cup holder design, just storage design, there's little nooks and crannies in here that most people are gonna really appreciate. Let's talk about infotainment for a second, which is your touch screen and all the apps on here. For the most part, this system works pretty well. Now, unfortunately, like most of the modern Toyota systems, including the Lexus devices, the graphical interface, just the overall look and feel of it doesn't seem very modern to me. It just, this is one area where they're lacking compared to a lot of other manufacturers. It just doesn't look very pretty. Yeah, it's kind of functional, but getting around is mostly dependent on the touchscreen. You don't have a central command knob here, so that's something to note. The second thing is they use this JBL new green edge technology for their sound system, which means they've reduced the overall size of the speakers, rely more on subs, and they use better quality speakers and a more efficient amplifier to save weight. Uh, what does all that mean? Well, honestly, it sounds pretty decent for what it is. What they're doing is working here. It's actually one of the better sound systems in its range, so that's something to look forward to. Overall, the mapping, the overall speed of the interface is just kind of average. Just scrolling around and moving around, there is some delay, there is some lag, and just, again, graphically, it's not very appealing. The RAV4 is a great example of how to make a mainstream vehicle work for a little bit of the enthusiast, somebody who wants to have a little bit of fun, somebody that's a truck person and a car person, to fit it in an everyday, doable, reliable package it's really kind of hard to complain about anything major here because it has a history of reliability for the most part. It has its problems like most manufacturers or models throughout its history, but you know, you're gonna buy this and not have too many problems.